You're listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. And now your host, Dennis Byram. Hello, and welcome to Joy of Champagne. I'm your host, Dennis Byram. This is our fifth episode, and we have been talking about the fundamentals of sparkling wine in our uh, series of Champagne 101. And this will be our last episode for our series, as we will then move on to other subjects as we learn the details and the mystical uh, depths of uh, sparkling wines. So in our previous episodes, we talked about how sparkling wine is made and how uh, different sparkling wines are made and the reason behind their differences, how they're aged and why are they the way they are. But we've skipped a quite an important issue or rather important parts. We haven't talked much about grapes. In today's world, we seem to be uh, obsessed with great varieties. There are tons of names going around and people are either fanatics of some great varieties or they hate their great varieties. We drink our wine according to where they are from and also, and actually a very important part of our decision, are the great varieties. So up until now, we haven't talked about any great varieties yet. But I think it would be fair enough to start talking about the great varieties of champagne. So we've talked about how champagne is produced, but we said that to start producing champagne, first we need to make a base wine. And the grapes that are used to make the base wine for champagne production are three main and three most popular grapes of the region of champagne. These are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Well, you might have already heard of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. These are already one of the, or two of the uh, most popular grape varieties in the entire world. But their, uh, their source, their home is actually Eastern France, more specifically Burgundy, and Champagne is just north of Burgundy. So it makes quite a lot of sense that Champagne would be using uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Third great variety, uh, Pinot Meunier, is an outsider compared to Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, but it is actually an essential part of Champagne production. It is a red grape variety, just like Pinot Noir, as opposed to Chardonnay, as Chardonnay is the only white grape variety in Champagne. Pinot Meunier is actually an essential blending element that balances the structure of our champagnes. Now, you might be very confused because I just told you that two red grape varieties are used to make champagne. But how does that happen? Champagne is never red. It's always either white or in rosé form. But how do red grapes make champagne then? Well, this actually brings us to the same logic behind rosé wines as well. How are rosé wines made? Rosé wines, including rosé champagne, are all made from red grape varieties. You see, red grape varieties, when we notice and actually uh, peel off their skins and take a deeper look into the red berries of them, you will notice that red grape varieties are not red inside. They are only red on their skins. So if you happen to crush a red grape berry, you won't be getting a deep red-colored juice. You will be getting an either gold-colored or a slightly pinkish-colored juice. In order to get a nice red color from red grapes, just like we have in red wines, involves a lot of crushing and a lot of agitation of the grape juice with the grape skins because the color would need to extract from the skins into the wine in order to give the wine its deep red color. So without doing that extraction process, if we just crush red berries, red grape berries, we will result with clear juice of either a pale golden color or a very, very pale pink color. And this is how exactly rosé wines and rosé champagne are made. 
And for this reason, we use the red grape varieties. So in relation to grapes of champagne and different colors of champagnes, we can start talking about the terminology that's used for the different colors of champagnes that are produced. You might have noticed or came across terminology that sounds like Blanc de Blanc or Blanc de Noir whenever you come across uh, certain bottles of champagnes. These terminologies are strictly connected to how the champagnes are, were made, which grape varieties they were made out of, and what the color of champagne is. So champagne is mostly made out of three grape varieties, uh, out of which only one is a white grape variety. In Blanc de Blanc champagne, which means in French Blanc de Blanc is white of white, which would indicate a white colored champagne uh, out, made out of white grapes. So this would be a white colored champagne made out of white Chardonnay grapes, which would mean a white of white champagne, uh, also known as Blanc de Blanc. But there's also Blanc de Noir, which translates into white of black. Well, what does that exactly mean? White of black would mean, in the same logic, a white wine made out of black grapes. Well, we just talked about how we can get clear juice from red grapes. And this is exactly how we get Blanc de Noir Champagne. Blanc de Noir Champagne is champagne that is produced from the clear juice of Pinot Noir grapes that are clearly pressed very gently in order to not extract any red color from the skins of those Pinot Noir grapes. And uh, that is how Blanc de Noir Champagne is made. And Blanc de Noir Champagne, since it's made from a red grape, although without its skins and resulting in a clear wine, are usually uh, heavier in terms of their body. They have a darker golden color uh, as opposed to Blanc de Blanc champagnes out of Chardonnay grapes. And this is solely because they are made out of uh, Pinot Noir grapes, which do give a slightly darker yellow color and a slightly more body. And then you will have neither of those as well, a uh, champagne that's uh, neither made in the Blanc de Blanc or nor the Blanc de Noir style, which would simply mean that it's a, it's a bottle of champagne that's a blend of all three grapes or even more than three grapes, both white and reds. And this would be a blended champagne, which certainly doesn't mean that it's lower quality, but it's uh, it only means that it was made uh, using both white and red grape varieties. And actually, these uh, styles of champagnes would be the ones we find most uh, commonly because they are slightly less costly to produce and uh, they tend to make a, a more stable and a more consistent wine, which would be uh, favorable and more palatable to more people around the world. But certainly, like I said, this does not mean that it's any uh, inferior style of wine compared to a Blanc de Blanc or a Blanc de Noir as well. But yes, you will see all three of the styles of champagnes uh, that regard to what kind of grapes they are made out of. So this marks the end of our Champagne 101 series, where I hope I was able to explain all the very fundamentals and the basics of reading a sparkling wine label and a champagne label. Because what we've learned is we've learned how champagne is made, uh, what are the different uh, styles of production, the differences between uh, the Prosecco and the champagne production, as well as different sweetness levels and what the terminology is uh, in relation to that. And in this episode, we talked about the grapes of champagne and how uh, different grape blends of champagne exist and uh, can have a different effect in terms of the in terms of the taste and as well as the color as well. So I hope after this point you'll find it easier to navigate uh, in the wine shop or in the supermarket while you're facing a shelf full of sparkling wines and, and to decide which one you'd like to pick. To keep in track of our newest episodes, do not forget to subscribe to our podcast. Thank you for listening, and until next time, stay bubbly.
Before we end, a word from our sponsors. This episode of the Joy of Champagne podcast was brought to you by the Excelsior by Dukes, one of the world's finest champagne flutes. 10.7 inches tall with a 10 ounce capacity. Handcrafted and mouth blown, lead free crystal glass. Find out more at clubdukes.co. That's spelled C L U B D U X dot C O. Because there are some things man can make better than any machine. Thanks for listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. We hope you join us on the next episode. In the meantime, feel free to visit us at joyofchampagne.com or drop us an email at hello at joyofchampagne.com. Thank you.